It was an old family friend. <laughs> ah, hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. This episode mm, brought to you by the fine people over at Magellan. You can get a free trial of Magellan where they have loads of amazing documentaries and docu-series and all of that good stuff. There is a link below. You get a full month for free. That's fantastic. Woo! Let me just get some coke before we get started. Ah, 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 ah. So that was a fucking lie. This is incredible stories of DNA ancestry. And you might be thinking, Simon, does this sound familiar? And the answer is yes. Yeah, absolutely should because I was looking for, uh, as I always do, I'm looking for new business place topics and I was looking on Top 10s, another channel that I do, and we have this video about DNA ancestry and it did really well. It got like millions of views and I was like, well, let's just do the same thing on business place. <laughs> Maybe we'll do some different stories. Maybe not because Danny probably didn't see that video because I have thousands of videos and I just thought it would be a bit more fun to blaze it because just blazing it is more fun. The logic is flawless. Let's carry on. Nowadays, oh, what happens here? Danny writes me a script. I will read the script, make it a little bit shit, and then Sam is gonna sprinkle in some fine vintage memes. Let's go. But before we continue, I must tell you about the fantastic sponsor of this episode, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is what? It's a new type of documentary streaming membership founded by filmmakers. They believe that history is the best lens for understanding who and what we are as a species and where we're going. I think, as I say in, in every read, that is true. I, I mean, look, oh, uh, Business Blaze is a little bit more weird than my other channels. Like, I always feel like Magellan, you know, I'm doing a biographics video. It's like, hey, you probably like documentaries and history and shit, so you're gonna love Magellan. But on Business Blaze, it's like, I'm not so sure. But what I am gonna figure is you're a big brain, and big brains, like your boy, like documentaries, and therefore like Magellan TV. So I, you know, I think it's a good choice. I think you should go check it out. It's got the most richest, the most richest, <laughs> a big brain. It's got the richest and most varied history content available anywhere. Tell me more, ancient, modern, current, early modern, war, biography know something about that, and other genres that bring the past to life in their own way, like science and true crime. Know about those as well? Oh, there's so much good stuff on there. Make a recommendation. What will I recommend? Hmm. I feel like I recommended this one last time, but I've noted here that I should recommend Battlefields of the World Wars. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's really good. I know this video's got absolutely nothing to do with Battlefields of World Wars. But you know, I feel like with documentaries, a good documentary is one where it's like you're not into the subject, but you still enjoy it. Like, I will watch this, and it's not like I happen to be interested in war, because it's quite interesting, but there are topics and there are documentaries that I'll watch, and I'll be like, I have no interest in this subject, but the documentary is so well made that you just watch it anyway. So definitely go check that one out, Battlefields of the World Wars, and uh, tons of other stuff, obviously. 3,000 documentaries to choose from, so check it out now. Click the link below to get a full month for free. Glorious. Nowadays, tracking your heritage can be a little more. This would be uh, a great video to be. I used to have sponsor, was it Ancestry DNA? They haven't sponsored me in years. I don't know why. Maybe they were just like, that's a bit <laughs> No one bought any Ancestry DNA. Ah! But yeah, they, they used to be a sponsor and it was pretty fun. They were like, hey, look at you, fact boy. That's your genetic mango. And I was like, cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Cool story, Hansel. Uh, I mean, it's certainly a lot less effort than it used to be. All you need to do is pay around $99 or so for a DNA ancestry kit from one of the many direct-to-consumer genetic testing services such as 23andMe and Ancestry.com. Yeah, it was Ancestry.com, which I think is Ancestry DNA. These, I got absolutely lost in Ancestry.com. Like, I, I think that I had a free trial of it because of the sponsorship. And oh my God, I traced my family like back to the 1850s. It's like, wow. This is really interesting. <laughs> and you're like doing all this detective work because it's all scanned and you're like, oh, these people with a slightly different surname, weird spelling, got married on the exact date. They are, that, that's them. They changed their names by accident, it seems, or something like that. It's crazy. It's so crazy. You feel like a little detective. These services require you to provide a saliva-based sample, so you just need to spit into a tube contained in the package, then post it back and wait for your web-based personalized report, which will reveal your real roots and relations in glorious detail. But apparently, the tube is surprisingly huge and it can take ages to fill it up with your saliva. That's... <laughs> it's like this big. You just spit in it and send it off. It's not that complicated. Unless Danny's just got a really small head or something. Uh, so don't hand over that $99 unless you're sure you've got the dedication and endurance required to spend a big dollop of your spare time spawning spittle. 
I've never heard this. Is this actually something trouble people run into? Let me know in the comments. Checking out your ancestry with these home kits is a craze which has been growing over the last few years, particularly in the United States. And it's a weird craze because it naturally comes packed with a frothy mouthful of risk, potentially opening doors to long buried family secrets and shocking revelations. Yeah, it is true. It'd be like, if I just got that, they were like, yeah, yeah, it turns out you're mostly Australian. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm adopted. <laughs> Don't know. My, that mine was like, oh, well, that's exactly what I expected. Uh, your whole life and identity could be pulled inside out with just one click of the mouse button, which opens up the report. Imagine you're an Irish American who just forked out a hundred thousand dollars worth for Irish dirt to scatter on your casket. <laughs> IG baby! I mean, it's not IG. We made this video out last week. Only to find out there isn't really a single drop of Irish blood in your ancestry. The last ten generations of your family all came from Rotherham. <laughs> ah. Oh yeah, that would be like. That. I don't know. Maybe there's a big Rotherham community in the United States. Probably not. Let me know in the comments. Perhaps one of the funniest DNA tests of all time occurred on the Trisha Goddard show in 2013. Yeah, and unlike a lie detector, which is accurate like only half the time, so it's basically just like flipping a coin, a DNA, DNA is uh, slightly more accurate. And by slightly, I mean almost foolproof. One of the guests was a vile white nationalist and white supremacist, Craig Cobb, a man. I feel like this was on the top 10 video. <laughs> I feel like I know the story. It turns out he's like a quarter black or something. And it's like, ah, ha! it's like, yeah, you're a white supremacist. It turns out that you're one quarter uh, black, you're one quarter Jewish, and uh, you're one quarter Romani, and you're, you're only a quarter white. <laughs> I don't think it's quite like that, but that would be like, Mwah. What did you... Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm white! <laughs> a man known for his celebration of violence and murder committed against minorities. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what you... And he recently began making attempts to take over the city of Leith in North Dakota and transform it into an all-white homeland for Aryans. Don't do that, Craig. It sounds really illegal, and I mean, you're probably, I mean, hopefully, gonna get shot. Cobb agreed to participate in a DNA test to prove his so-called pure genetic heritage. But things went a bit tits up when this, in the studio when it's real that Cobb was 86% European and 14% Sub-Saharan African. The audience howled with laughter at Cobb's frozen smile and his lame attempts to dismiss the results as statistical noise. Trisha trying to help give him a fist bump with the encouraging words, You got a little black in you, bro. <laughs> I love it. Uh, mwah. Cobb later claimed without evidence that he'd taken a further DNA test, which has shown that he was 97% European, while the remaining 3% was an Iberian thing. <laughs> Sounds like denial. At that moment, um, I thought he was fucked. But it sounds to me as if Cobb was talking out of his 14% sub-Saharan African ass. Yes, Cobb, you knob. In other cases, the results from a simple DNA ancestry kit have produced monumental consequences for families whose lives will never quite be the same again. Can you imagine, like, ancestry DNA talking points? Ancestry DNA, a fascinating look into your past, which might ruin your life. <laughs> Tread carefully. <laughs> I mean, I never thought about it because I'm like, my parents had never told me I was adopted. I like have an idea of both my parents' ancestry, but I I didn't realize like you could open that up and like your sh your sh fall apart. Like you'd be like, I, you know, I never even thought about it, but it'd be like, yeah, that could be intense, and I'm sure it is intense for a lot of people. <laughs> And this selection of incredible tales of DNA ancestry just gets stranger and stranger as we go along. Okay. Well, I have to say, we're starting from a very strong place, Danny, with the partially black white supremacist. <laughs> Cat amongst the pigeons. These DNA ancestry kits have proved to be a popular choice for quirky birthday or Christmas gift. And in December 2020, Paul McDonald from Nashville, Tennessee, decided to splash out on buying kits for every member of his family, including his daughter, Cat. I feel like if there was something dodgy be going on, you'd be like, yeah, dear wife, do you think, what do you think about getting our daughter an ancestry kit for Christmas? Christmas? Wouldn't it be fun? No! No, Peter! We definitely won't get her that! Oh, why not? I don't... Just no, Peter. Oh, shit. Peter be like... <laughs> Did you come? What? 
But it's a bit of a dangerous Christmas present to buy for your loved ones. You might have been better off buying one of those Hasbro Easy Bake Ovens that just cook your fingers. The results would probably have been a lot less dramatic. Cat McDonald was a professional violinist who had always identified as Irish. I suppose the surname offers a bit of a clue, as well as the fact that Cat had bright red hair. It sounds a little bit racist, Danny. Uh, what was their surname? McDonald. Yeah, I guess that is that is pretty Irish. Her parents had split up long ago and she was still in close contact with both of them, but as Kat revealed with a dash of sarcasm on a TikTok video that quickly went viral, her dad's brilliant idea for a Christmas gift soon turned a bit sour. <laughs> as she first pulled up the results on her screen, she was shocked to discover that she had no Irish ancestry whatsoever. So that was a fucking lie. She was 75% Norwegian, while the rest of her genetic makeup was a mixture of German and British. She was so surprised by the news that she phoned her dad, Paul, immediately, who poured scorn on the suggestion that Kat wasn't Irish. Maybe there'd just been a mix-up. With the test results, that hadn't been Paul. I've got some news for you. But a further shock was quickly to follow as Kat continued to pursue the results on screen while still chatting to her dad on the phone. The results showed that a paternal match wasn't Paul. This might have been the confirmation that there was something fundamentally wrong with the results. <laughs> there is, but it's not what you think. <laughs> I mean, it is exactly what you're thinking right now. Except that Paul recognized the name of the person that Kat read aloud. It was an old family friend. <laughs> It's unclear how I don't know what we shouldn't be laughing at this is absolutely savage. What does it taste like? It tastes like you but sweeter. What? Thank you for your honesty. Now fuck off and die. It's unclear how Kat's mother reacted to this discovery, but it's fair to say that both Kat and Paul both seem to have shake, been shaken to the core. Paul later told the Irish Central website that he felt that his heart had been ripped out from his chest and that everything he believed to be true about his daughter was a lie. Well, relax, Paul. It's got nothing to do with your daughter. It's got everything to do with your wife. Uh, meanwhile, Kat made a considerable effort to track down a biological father, whom she reckoned was now the billionaire CEO of a major company, with three other daughters working in his offices. <laughs> Really? It's possible that she may have been over-exaggerating his wealth, but he certainly seemed to be doing all right. I mean, there's a difference between doing all right and being a billionaire. A very, very large difference. I'll say, what, you're a millionaire, you're doing all right. You're a billionaire, you're a thousand times richer. It's a big difference. But it's TikTok, so who cares about facts? Kat drove halfway across the country to hand deliver a personal letter, which she claims was a simple message of thanks, as she feels happy to be alive. But upon hearing Kat's name, it's reported that the CEO refused to meet with her. Bitch, you don't fucking know me! As this is still a very recent story, there may still be a few more chapters to unfold over the course of the future. But it does beg the question, did Paul McDonald suspect something all along? As one of Kat's followers on TikTok speculated, he knew something was up. You don't gift a whole family DNA kits <laughs> unless something's up. Yeah, that is fair. But he's very, he's like, yeah, yeah, I got you this nice Christmas gift. You use that now. Oh! <laughs> oh, beautiful! It certainly was an unusual gift choice to give the whole family at once, which resulted in notably unhappy holidays. Let's just hope he sticks with Amazon vouchers next Christmas. <laughs> well, he's not going to be doing the ancestry kit again, is he? <laughs> you don't need that twice. You got all the answers you needed, Paul. Pennsylvania pantomime. Here's a story which took 75 years to unravel. Sandra Baronick Payne of Du... Du... Du Bois? Du Bois? Du Bois? Pennsylvania was another lucky recipient of a DNA ancestry gift as a Christmas gift of 2017. She was 75 years old at the time, and so full marks to Sandra for managing to accumulate enough spittle to fill up the tube. Danny, why is... Do you... Do you just not have any saliva? You just like... Uh, she wasn't particularly tech-savvy, though, and probably have preferred a nice tea cozy or something. Anyway, Sandra had grown up in a Slavic family, and so she was surprised to discover that the results reckoned that she was predominantly Italian. So Sandra did what any curious soul would do. She assumed that the kit was a useless piece of shite, and thought no, no more about it. The story could have very easily ended there. Literally a few months later in 2018, a woman called Deborah Monaco Zafato also bought a DNA ancestry kit to trace her Italian family heritage. Also hailing from Pennsylvania, although she had moved around the state quite a bit, Deborah had a brother and a sister, the latter of whom she also called Sandra. But she was mystified by the results of the test. Her sister Sandra didn't show up anywhere, and yet the results declared that Deborah had another long lost sister living in Dubois. And uh, is it Dubois, Du Bois? I don't know. I don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. And I'm going to go with Du Bois. And of course, that long lost sister was Sandra. 
Baronick Payne. Deborah got up to a little detective work and found that Sandra Baronick Payne's profile on Facebook. She was startled at the very clear family resemblance. Following further tests, it was revealed that Sandra, whom Deborah had believed to be her sister for 75 years, was not in fact biologically related to the rest of the family. She was, however, a perfect match for the family of Sandra Baronick Payne. They were swapped in the hospital, or something like that, because it's like, they just... That it's a, they, they need to be in the other place person's place. Meanwhile, Sandra Baronick Payne wasn't related to anyone she had grown up with and yet was a perfect match for Deborah's family. This is crazy sh**. Both of the Sandras had been born on the same date in 1942 and at the same local hospital. And the only feasible explanation is that the hospital had buckled under the strain of coping with two babies with identical names and sent both sets of, pa sets of parents home with the wrong Sandra. So that was a fucking lie. I don't know if I'm sure many of you have children, but like the effort they go to to make the your baby isn't swapped with someone else's these days is crazy. Like they were, they had tags on like the leg. They drew like in permanent marker. It was like a number on the chest of the baby. So like they, they, and this doesn't come off until they go home. It's like they, they really are on their shit by making sure that that is your kid. Also, my kid looks like me, so it's like, ah, ah. The weird thing is that the paths of two Sandras had crossed from time to time during their school days in Pennsylvania without either of them realizing that they were living in each other's biological family. That is cray cray. And this 75 year cock up could have remained undetected forever if either Deborah or Sandra Baronick Payne hadn't bothered using the kit and storing their results in the DNA database. There's some sadness attached to this story, as both sets of parents died long before the discovery, and the. Yeah, they were born in 1940. Do. It's been a while. I, don't, I wasn't really expecting them to still be alive. And the Sandra that Deborah had believed to be her sister all this time was seriously ill with cancer, and so it was decided not to burden her with the shocking revelation. She died later that same year. But the good news is that Deborah and her brother are now making up for lost time with their biological sister, and relatives on both sides now regularly meeting up to form a new extended family. How nice, but weird. As Deborah quite sweetly puts it, the deceased Sandra will always be her lifelong sister, but Sandra Baronick Payne is now her is now now her rest of my life sister. All right. Over complicating things. <laughs> Maybe there was another explanation for all of this, though, which doesn't lay all the blame at the doors of the hospital. The parents could have just decided that their own respective babies were hideously ugly, and so decided to make a last minute switch when they met up later down the pub. Yes, that sounds just as likely. Indiana clones and the Temple of Womb. It's one thing to wake up one morning and realize that you've got a long lost sibling, but imagine the shock of finding out that you've got 62 of them. Oh, the sperm doctors have been doing something dodgy. Oh, sh in 2016, Heather Wook from Indiana was gifted a DNA ancestry gift from her husband, and her heritage results were exactly as expected. She didn't even bother checking out the links to her potential family members as she wasn't expecting any surprises there. But then the following year, she received a message from a fellow user of the service who believed they were half-siblings as they shared the same father. Heather initially assumed the scent was either mistaken or was rustling up some kind of weird scam. She, it, Yeah, if someone did that to me, I'd immediately be like, so, what? What, you... What do you want? <laughs> I'm not giving you any money! <laughs> She ignored the message and thought no more about it. But then somebody got, else got in touch saying exactly the same thing, then another, and another, and another. Heather had always been aware that her mother had received fertility treatments at a local Indiana clinic before Heather was born. Meanwhile, Jacob Ballard's mother had used the same clinic at around the same time in the 1970s, and it was Jacoba who managed to fit the jigsaw pieces together after she also used a DNA kit test kit to discover that she had over 50 half-siblings. Holy sh**. All the matches led to the same father. His name was Dr. Donald Klein, and he was the owner of the fertility clinic. F called it. <laughs> Like, dude, what are you up to? And can you imagine, like, the before DNA testing anything like that? You're like, no one will ever find out. At that moment, um, I thought he was fucked. To be honest, it's 50 years later. He's probably dead. He'd be dead, maybe dead, or very old. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donald! It turns out that Donald had been secretly impregnating his patients with his own sperm throughout the 70s and 80s, and these children, now in their 30s and 40s, were just realizing the truth. There have so far been at least 63 children uh, being identified as the offspring of Dr. Donald Klein, although as all the records were conveniently destroyed years ago, the true figure is expected to be much higher. Yeah, what was there? A fire! There was a fire! <laughs> This does raise the unpleasant image of how exactly Dr. Donald Klein was spending most of his working day behind his locked office door. Well, hang on. There's so many sperm in, like, ejaculate that he, I mean, surely he could just do it once and then freeze it all. Although why would he only do it once? Am I right, Peter? Did you come? What?
But it also begs the question, why? Well, does it? I was, I, I was listening to, or reading, or there was something where people were discussing a case like this, and I'm like, am I a psycho that I get why? It's like the primary drive of humans is to reproduce. Like, that is what we are biologi biologically intended to do. Like, reproduce and have more kids. Like, to beat off all of the other, beat off, but a bum bum beat off all of the other uh, men. God, this is getting weird, isn't it? Like, uh, compete against them and have more children. So, this is that biological thing just <laughs> played out in a really psycho way, Doc. It could be the case that Donna was trying to seize control of Indiana and populate the state with thousands of his own children. It's been argued that he simply didn't have the heart to let down his patients if other suitable donors couldn't be found. Perhaps it's more likely that it was a cold business decision. He was simply trying to satisfy his customers under challenging circumstances. Jacoba arranged a meeting with the long-retired evil, evil scientist along with six of her newly discovered half-siblings. But it was hardly a touching family reunion. They found Donald to be a detached and remorseless character who insisted on quoting random passages from the Bible at them. Donald. It's like, hey, doctor, uh, we're six of your kids that you made after beating off in, your in his office. And I walked in the shadow of the valley of death. It's like, whoa, <laughs> Dr. Klein, what's up? And he kind of got away with the deception too. There was no law at the time in Indiana which prohibited doctors from using their own sperm in patients. Oh my God, there should be. <laughs> Donald was ultimately charged with two counts of felony obstruction of justice as he had written reply letters to the attorney general which denied the allegations when he was first placed under investigation. Is that illegal? Can't you deny something if you're being accused? Isn't that like, oh no, you can shut the f up. Wait, is that illegal? Okay, I guess it is. <laughs> Noted. Don't deny things to an attorney general. <laughs> You fact, boy. He hadn't been under any legal obligation to reply to those letters, so he may have got away with this entirely if he hadn't just bothered. Okay, if he just hadn't bothered. Yeah, I guess that's the... Just... Okay, fuck. <laughs> In the end, he was fined just $500, given a year's probation, and he lost his medical license, which had no bearing anyway, as he'd been retired for 10 years. Thankfully, some good came out of this sticky mess, as it led directly to the introduction of Indiana's first facility fraud law. Oh, uh... There was a... There was a ghost! Uh, there's, there's ectoplasm! Good. But I imagine Christmas shopping just got very expensive and complicated for those 63 half-siblings. Just carry on with your lives and make sure you don't f of them. The mythical children of the goats. Oh, shit. It's fair to assume that Lydia Fairchild from Washington State has very vivid memories of giving birth to her two, two children. She claims she was there at the time, really. But in one of the most baffling DNA stories in history, a test in 2002 seemed to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that she wasn't the mother of her own children. They got swapped at the hospital. Uh, or something... That's my theory so far. We've seen it play out already. And this time, it was nothing to do with an accidental swap at the hospital. F*** Danny. God damn it! It was something far more extraordinary. Ooh, something to do with goats. Lydia and her ex-partner, Jamie Townsend, had already conceived two children, and in fact, there was a third on the way, although Lydia and Jamie had called time on their relationship. Now a single mother and facing financial challenges, Lydia applied for government assistance, and this required straightforward DNA testing to confirm that she was the mother of the children for whom she was claiming benefits. Wow, they really do that? That's pretty intense. Wow. I mean, good, I guess, but then why if you're not? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you just have to go hungry. <laughs> There was no doubt in Lydia's mind that the two children she was raising were the very same children that should popped out in hospital. The DNA test showed that Jamie was definitely the father, and that the kids had genetic links with other members of Lydia's family. The only slight niggle was that Lydia wasn't the mother. It was most it was more likely that she was an aunt. What is going on? This didn't just mean that Lydia was denied government assistance. It meant that she was now under suspicion of committing welfare fraud and possibly even involvement in a surrogacy scam. What is going on? This is crazy. How can this be explained? She, unless she's like delusional and never gave birth or they could have been swapped. The, this is, what is going on? Following brutal interrogation from social services who challenged Lydia, Lydia's very identity, her case eventually went to trial where prosecutors called for her children to be taken away. She found it difficult to find a good lawyer as nobody was willing to find DNA evidence. Does it m matter if they're DNA-wise your children? The children will be like, yeah, that's my mum. I'd like to be with her. And then we'll be like, these are my kids. I'd like to be with them. And they'll be like, the DNA doesn't match up. Science says no. Be like, science in that case, 
can kind of fuck right off. Fuck you, science! Apparently DNA tests are 100% foolproof and lawyers can't really argue with them. Exit, just do it again, just double test it. I mean, in this case, why not? It's 100 quid. Ex-boyfriend Jamie tried to lend support in any way you could, and there was little he could do other than insult, insist that Lydia was the mother. But there was little he could do except for insist that Lydia was the mother of his children. Lydia eventually found someone willing to defend her case, and a new lawyer dug up an intriguing historical news story from Boston, Massachusetts, which might just help to offer an explanation. Fast forward a few months, and Lydia was giving birth to a third child. All the usual suspects were there. The midwife, the father, a court representative. <laughs> The idea was that the court representative would witness the birth of the child and then oversee immediate DNA tests of both Lydia and her new baby. Sure enough, the results indicated that Lydia was not the mother of the child to which she had clearly given birth. This has got to be some crazy DNA thing. Like, what is this thing? Is this wild? The lawyer's investigation into a similar previous case involving Karen Keegan had thrown up clues that Lydia Fairchild might just be a chimera. That is, this is the monster which combines part of a lion, a snake, and a goat. I'm guessing there's another definition of chimera. Well, that's the mythical version. The real life version of a chimera is a person with two distinct set of genes. I vaguely remember a CSI episode about this where they were genetically testing them and they weren't guilty or they were guilty or something, but then the DNA didn't match up because they had different DNA in different parts of their body. It's crazy this exists. Lydia's own mother would have never had any idea that her pregnancy originally started out with a pair of twins who effectively merged into one. Or to put it another way, Lydia had absorbed her twin, but the cells of the other twin still remain very much alive in Lydia, who could now be considered two humans with the price of one. She was her own twin sister. That sh is wild. The traditional methods of DNA testing, skin, hair and blood, etc., had only revealed the genes of the other twin, which is why the results had indicated that Lydia was the aunt of her own children. This is so cool. Oh, Jesus. Gross. A further DNA test from a cervical smear eventually revealed the missing link of the second set of genes, proving conclusively that Lydia was a chimera and she was very much the real mother. There have apparently only been about 100 documented cases of chimerism in medical history, so it's not something usually considered in a trial involving foolproof DNA evidence. Yeah, of all the billions, and there's a few hundred. I mean, I, I don't really blame them, but still, this is a cool story. And respect to that lawyer for figuring that shit. If Lydia's lawyer hadn't discovered the story of Karen Keegan from Boston, it's very likely that the courts would have branded Lydia a criminal and taken her children away from her. One positive outcome from the crisis is that Lydia and Jamie became close again during the nightmare and of the trial and decided to give their relationship another go. Woo! Uh, so I'd like to think there's plenty of time to make more bouncing babies along the way. If Lydia and Jamie ever feel stuck for birthday gifts to the children, I'm sure a bulk load of DNA ancestry kits would prove to be a proper chuckle fest for the whole family. You bet they would. Thank you for the callback, Danny. Thank you for the script. This has been an episode of Business Place. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Magellan TV. There's a link below. Smash that like button. Thanks for watching.